Hello there, YouTubers and Weavers and anybody else that happens to listen in on my channel here. Hey, um, it's been about two or three days now since I posted the first part of this uh, double weave, double wide sampler video. And since then I have been playing around with it and learning a few things. Uh, the most important thing is that the lift plan or treadling, the, the lever pull sequence, that I told you about in the first video was wrong. Um, that's why this is a sampler and that's why this is a learning project. So this is going to be hard to explain. <laughs> but basically I gave it to you as if both the top and bottom layers have the same top and bottom. But because of the fold, remember that fold that goes like this? So if this is the top of the bottom layer, and this is the top of the top layer, you can see they're on opposite sides of my hand. So in order for them to work correctly when I unfold them, I've got to do opposites. So this is just difficult to say. <laughs> Anyways, I'm, I've, I'm going to try and explain it to you um, maybe with a, a piece of paper and a bit of a drawing. So let me get that and I'll come right back. Okay, let's pretend for a moment that this piece of paper is the cloth that I'm weaving. And as you can see, it's, right now it's just plain, nothing written on it. But it's in two layers, folded on the side the same way that my weave is. So I go over this side, back under this side, over this side, back under this way, okay? Now let's pretend that I'm throwing the weft threads across and for the sake of keeping it straight in my head, let's pretend that the yellow marker that I've got is going to be the gray warp. So we'll go one way and then we'll go the other way. I gotta flip it over to do it because I can't write upside down. And then we'll go, anyways, that's, that's that. So now the next thing we're going to do is the colored weft that's going to show up. So for that I'm going to do, let's say I've got this pattern where the orange is going to show on top. Okay, kind of like the pink is showing right here. Okay, so what I showed you was something I said to do for the top layer I would do 1, 3 and for the underneath layer I would do um, 5, 7. So that would be doing 5, 7. And I'm, again because I can't actually go underneath here, I'm doing the 5, 7s here. Okay. Then I, that would be the first thing I do. Then coming back the other way, I would do 2, 3, and let's do 2, 3 with pink, just to say the other one. That's going back this way. 2, 3 will be showing, and 2, 3 will be showing. Or actually, 2, 3 and 6, 7 on the bottom. 2, 3, and 6, 7. The problem with this is, as you can see, what happens when I unfold, when I take it off the loom and unfold it, I get a sheet like this, where it's on one side, and like this, where it's on the other. What I should have done is this. I should have said, let's do it at the bottom of this paper. I should have done one, three, so it's on the top, and then one, three, and five, eight, instead of five, seven. Not five, eight. Yeah, five, eight. Okay, and then coming back the other way, and the so when this unfolds, you can see they're both on the same side. What I basically forgot is 
that the the bottom layer of my weaving is truly upside down from the top so I have to plan my wefts exactly opposite of the way they are on the top layer. I hope that makes sense to you. I've had I started out doing this wrong. I've had a hard time um, wrapping my brains around this. Okay, so let's unwind a little bit. The part that I did here where you can see I've got the gold blocks that was done the way I told you I was going to do it and it came out wrong. Okay, the part that I've got here with the pink blocks is where I think I have corrected myself. I won't be 100% sure till I take this off the loom, but I think that's got the correction. Now this part here where it's in just you're just seeing the gray is where I'm trying another technique. It's possible with this summer and winter pattern. If you remember I talked about there being a block A and a block B. You can see that in the pink the, where the pink and gray are here. Okay? You can also do, if you're careful, a block A and B at the same time to have it show yellow all the way across on one side or gray all the way at one side and have the yellow be underneath. So that's what I'm working on now. In, so in effect you can have you can have A or B. You can have a and then or B or you can do a B and or a B or not a not B how's that for logic sounds like something a programmer would do hey that's what I used to do before I retired so anyways that's what I'm working on now and let me figure out exactly where I am and we'll come back and I'll do a couple of shots of weaving across here. Okay, I'm ready to do this. I've got... I, I, maybe I should move this out a little bit so you can see the... Um, There you can see the levers. See those? Okay, and I've got the first two are down. So we'll do one set like this. We're doing the gray tabby on top across one way. And we'll do the gray tabby across on the bottom. Okay, now we'll do the yellow pattern of AB, where I've got both blocks A and B showing on the top. Then I'm going to change to work on the bottom layer. And here's where I'm doing it wrong because I'm going to have AB showing on the top of the bottom layer in effect on the inside okay and then we'll go back to tabby of the bottom layer and then tabby of the top layer and then bottom layer return and again this is the AB on the top of the bottom layer
and then AB on the top of the top layer. So there's that. That's one pass at all AB. And I'll, show, I'll point this out to you. I'm going to end, end the video for right now and when I'm getting ready to take it off the loom I'll show you this. Okay, let's do one more row. This is going to be, remember I said that was, that, that last row I showed you was where I had the AB on the top of the top and AB on the top of the bottom. Okay, and I've got four rows like that done there. Four complete sets. So you can see that big yellow stripe. Now I'm going to do the AB on the top of the top, but the AB on the bottom of the bottom. So, at least that's what I think I'm going to do based on the notes I've written down on what I've got to do next. So let's try it and see how it comes out. So there we go. The, the tabby is the same as it was last time around. So we'll flip those down. We came out correctly underneath there. So now we want just lever one for the AB to show on top of the top. And it's going to look just like that yellow stripe from before. There we go, AB on top of the top. But now let's go to the bottom layer. So we'll move the whole top layer up, out of the way. And now on the bottom, instead of doing just lever 5, I'm going to do 5 and 7, 8. That should, the 7, 8 part should move the AB from the top of the bottom to the bottom of the bottom. Okay, and now we'll do tabby with the gray. And this is on the bottom layer first, so there's the tabby of the bottom. Close the bottom, and tabby of the top coming back. Now we've got to do the pattern of the bottom, so we'll get the top out of the way. 6, 7, 8 will be the opposite the bottom, so now we can tabby bottom bottom. Get the top, get that out of the way, and now we're going to do the return pattern top top. There we are, another full set. And again, when I get this off the loom, I'll be able to show you if that actually worked or not. Okay, well, you know, the lighting's not too good, the greatest today because it's a dreary day outside and I don't have lights turned on in here. I'm just using the light from the front windows over there. So, let's um, loosen the tension just a little bit. I don't know if you can see that I've actually got a little over an inch of just just gray there. But we'll cut off that. We'll... You know what? I'm going to leave a bunch of um, ends on here. That is all the farther it'll pull. So let's go. I'm not going to do a twisted fringe on this thing, even though I would on a finished blanket, since um, this is just intended for a test. But um, there we are. Let's. And for this end, I think I'm going to actually untie rather than um, 
snip so I've got a little bit longer fringe here. I can take out this bit of white cotton that I used just as a header strip. So I'll turn the camera back off again until I get this untied. Okay, all my knots are untied, but it's not off yet, but it will be real soon because that's what we're doing right now. There we are, off of... Let's see if we can separate all these ends. Okay, so that's the way we've been seeing it. Just the width that it was on the loom. And now we um, open it up and see what the inside looks like. So, what I'm seeing here is that I definitely need to be more careful with my technique at the fold, because you can definitely see that line there. But um, with a little bit of stretching and pulling, we might be able to make this work. So this is the inside. And... This is the outside, the side that we could see before. You can see the fold is definitely a little too, a little too obvious. I need to work on that um, bit of technique. So that's going to take some doing. What I'm going to do, like I said, I'm not going to put twisted fringes on here. It's not uh, not a piece that's going to go out and for everybody to see. What I am going to do is just go through and tie knots in here and leave the fringes be as I've done sometimes on um, scarves and such. And then this is going to go get washed so we can fill it up because this is definitely um, Harrisville Design Wool is wonderful to work with on the loom but it's got a little bit of sizing in it that uh, makes it easier to work with on the loom but not real comfortable and it needs fulling. So a good washing, um, fairly gentle but, but good with a little bit of soap is what this needs next and we'll see what that does to the fold because that should when we fold this a little bit it should get a little better. So next trip is to the wash machine and um, I think uh, we're not going to take you along down to the basement to the wash machine. You don't need to see that part of it. Well, it's, uh, I've got this through the wash machine. It folded up really nicely. Um, I do like the feel of using summer and winter with the two different weights of wool from um, Harrisville Designs. The fold in the middle is still noticeable, but it's not nearly as bad as it was um, when I, I first pulled it off and before it had been through the wash machine. So I think with it, just a little bit of more care when I'm weaving the bigger project I can make this work. So you can see here the where I used the gold that's Harrisville's um, Highland weight. The pink is Shetland weight but I doubled it for the pattern weft. Then the yellow is also Shetland weight doubled for the pattern weft and this is the area where I said you could have A or B or not A and not B and A and B. So and that and, and obviously there's a one line of mistake in there. So anyways uh, and then I went back this is where I actually started on this end. So I think as an experiment, this worked out just fine. It's, it's what I was hoping to, to learn from it. Um, I'm going to need to be a little bit careful. I do have one threading mistake at the uh, fold, and I think that's one of the reasons it's showing up a little bit funny. So I'm going to have to be very careful in working that out when I go to the bigger loom. But overall, I'm, I'm happy with, with what I got, even though, hey, this is just a really small piece. But... Um, it accomplished what I wanted for it. So that's that's this one. 
Next project coming up, um, I may do another set of towels before I actually do the full size blanket. I haven't quite decided yet. We'll see. Or maybe I'll do a cooking video next. Who knows? Anyways, thanks for watching. If you're not a subscriber, I'd appreciate it if you did. If you are a subscriber, thanks a lot for being there. Bye bye.